Bethany, seeing that it is 7 p.m. and we are already recording, I will go ahead and call this meeting to order. Welcome Vice Mayor Council Members in service. Call this meeting for January 18th, 2022 to order. Council Member Nason, would you please read the land acknowledgement? You are muted, Council Member Nason. It's okay. <laughs> My apologies. All right. Uh, the City of Albany recognizes that we occupy the land originally protected by the Confederate, Confederated Villages of Lashon. We acknowledge the genocide that took place on these lands and must make strides to repay the moral debt that is owed to this indigenous people, specifically the Ohlone tribe. We thank them for their contributions, which have transformed our community and will continue to bring forth growth and unity. The City of Albany commits to sustaining ongoing relationships with the tribe and together build a better future for all that now makes this their home. Thank you, Councilmember Nason. City Clerk, would you please call roll? Councilmember Gary? Present. Councilmember McQuay? Here. Councilmember Nason? Here. Vice Mayor Tiedemann? Here. And Mayor Jordan. Here. Thank you, City Clerk. City Manager, may we have your report? Thank you, Mayor. An update for the Council and community regarding 739 Madison. The petition has been filed by our City Attorney's Office with the court. Service of the parties is complete. So now our City Attorney's Office is working on drafting the motion to appoint a receiver. It should be filed within the next week or two with a hearing on the appointment of the receiver being about a month out from filing. Ideally, the receiver, receiver will be appointed in mid to late February. In addition, the notice of pendency has been recorded against the property clouding the title. Any questions on that, I will likely defer to our city attorney's office and thank them for their continued focus on this matter as directed by the council. Um, an update on our business license renewal. The letters have been sent out and should have been received by businesses. The due date for these bills is January 31st, 2022. All bills have been sent out. And if you haven't received yours or if you have any questions, please contact our finance department at accounts receivable at albanyca.org or via phone 510-528-5730. Special recognition for all that participated in the importance of the holiday yesterday, uh, Martin Luther King Day, and to the service of our community for committing to this important holiday. You can see Representative Barbara Lee's video posted to our website we're very appreciative of this commemoration for Martin Luther King and continue to serve throughout the year. You hopefully have seen delivery of a recreation, much more than just a recreation guide uh, delivered by mail to all residents in Albany. And we also have extra copies around at the community center and other facilities. So please take a look at this. It provides a, what I hope is a helpful summary across all departments, what your city services are doing in your community. Um, I'd like to recognize all of the staff that woke up early this Saturday uh, for our tsunami uh, warning and alert. Um, while this was not a major disastrous event, it certainly helped departments across the city uh, through another exercise to alert our community in the event of um, risk that could have been pending at our uh, waterways and beach. So again, thank you for your awareness throughout that situation and to our staff for continuing to follow through throughout the day and monitoring any potential issues to our community. ECHO, uh, one of our nonprofit service providers, has a couple of events coming up. I believe I've mentioned these previously, but want to, again, underscore the opportunities. 
On January 22nd and 29th from 10 to 3 p.m., we have two free workshops regarding home buyer education. Um, you can visit echofairhousing.org slash events for more information and to register. Also, a regional fair housing training on February 4th, again, provided by Echo Housing. This will be from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And it is a training for tenants, landlords, and other members of the housing industry and open to the general public. Same link to register. It's echofairhousing.org slash events. The business and community surveys on long-term park clips has been completed. I'd like to really thank everybody, including staff, for preparing and participating in this important input survey. Um, over the course of the survey, we've had 1,300 community members and over 100 businesses submit a response to the survey. Looking forward to learning more about the res responses received. Uh, the next steps in this process will be discussion with our Transportation Commission, as well as the Economic Development Committee, and then again returning to the Council for more direction and discussion. On a positive note, <laughs> with all the challenges of the uh, COVID pandemic, I'm delighted to relay from Alameda County Public Health Department that more than 80% of Alameda County residents are now fully vaccinated. That's still a little ways to go, but definitely a good number. Also, I hope that everyone received today through the, their channels and media and communication that USPS is delivering at-home COVID tests. It's a very simple sign up. I did it today. Put in your name and some simple information and up to four free tests per um, household are available free of charge. And the link for that in case it's needed is special.usps.com slash test kits. And that completes my report. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, city manager. And thanks staff for the recreation guide. It's a uh little slice of normalcy in the midst of what we're dealing with and staff for evacuating the waterfront in response to the tsunami um, warning. And I would also like to thank the Kensington Police Department for its mutual aid response in helping with that evacuation. Um, with that, Councilmember Nason? Uh, yes, and uh, I'd like to echo Mayor Jordan's um, uh, thanks and appreciation. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of good news tonight and uh, in these rather dark days, uh, literally and figuratively, it's always good to hear, hear good things. Um, I wanted to ask about the comprehensive annual financial report and whether we're still on track to get that by the end of the month. Thank you. Yes, Council Member Nason. I'm sorry, I didn't have that in my notes to uh, um, respond to this evening, but yes. We remain on track to present that information to the council at your second meeting in February and anticipate the report to be delivered to you pre prior to that meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, if anyone attending would like to ask a question about or a comment on the city manager's report, please press your raise hand button. You will have one minute. If you're on the phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine. Note, this is for questions and comments on the city manager's report only. If you have comments on matters not on the agenda, the time for those is coming up next. In this and all comments and questions during the meeting, please address the council, not other attendees, and respect each person who has spoken. The council wants everyone to feel comfortable speaking and not to be intimidated by others' comments and reactions. And I see one hand raised, city clerk, you could like the individual in. Hi, good evening, city manager. I really like your report. Um, there's a lot of stuff you covered. Um, I had a question about the tsunami. I appreciate everybody's quick response to the waterfront. Um, my question, um, I really like how you said certainly in there, Nicole. Um, you were speaking about the tsunami and then you said the word certainly when I was thinking about cert, <clears throat> you know, community emergency response team. So I like how you said certainly because you had CERT in there and that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, was CERT 
involved in that and um during cert training is that something maybe we could add if it was never inside of cert training is a tsunami tsunami um and possibly you know on the neighborhood blocks uh, maybe we could get a grant for life jackets or something just in case um but yeah so i was just wanting to throw a shout out for cert just to make sure um you know they're cooperating and everybody's involved thank you keep up the good work Thank you, Mr. Anguilla. I don't know if you have any information in that regard, City Manager. Sure, Mayor, and thank you for the question. Yes, CERT is actively engaged with our disaster preparedness staff um, to find opportunities to work collaboratively with regard to any potential evacuation issue. Um, with regard to any incident relating specifically to the event on Saturday, we, we didn't necessarily need that evac evacuation. Um, however, we did close off the area with public safety staff. Um, I can say that we are working, like I said, closely with CERT and looking forward to a much more extensive partnership in um, the foreseeable future here, and we'll certainly have more in I said certainly again, <laughs> uh, certainly have more information um, forthcoming on that as soon as we have a little more detail. I'll, I'll note on that topic that um, given my, my day job as a geologist, I, I noticed that in an interesting bit of timing, the USGS issued a new tsunami inundation map that covers Albany. Um, that was issued, I believe, about five months ago, of all things. Uh, I didn't think to forward it to staff, but perhaps I should do that. So I'll try to find that link and, and send it along so you have that information. Uh, with that brings us to good of the city. Uh, this is for attendees to provide the council comments, information and questions on an item that is not on the agenda. Please raise your hands now. By phone again is star nine. Please note by state law known as the Brown Act, the council cannot discuss items that are not on the agenda except under extraordinary circumstances. Rather items raised may be referred to a future agenda or to staff for comment. And looking at hands that are raised, I see one attendee who has their hand raised. City clerk, if you could admit them. Yeah, good evening. Um, I don't know where to begin, but I'll start somewhere. So um, I was going to speak on behalf of Albany's, um, it's not the CERT program, it's the uh, Civics Academy. Um, we used to have this great Civics Academy. It was offered through the Recreation Department and the Albany Activity Guide. It was $10 each, I mean, it was $10 per person. There were 20 people who needed to sign up for the class to be offered. Um, although I went on YouTube and the last time I think Albany's offered it was 2017. Um, and the Civics Academy is, is great. I mean, it's kind of the leadership class of the community. Um, it's a way to encourage um, public participation. Um, it's a way to let uh, young people um know what's going on in the city the you know the inner workings uh, i know a few high school students um i won't mention names but they think it's a good idea um <clears throat> that they would like to take the civics academy because it'd be great for their college resume um you know something like that so i think it would be great for our residents it'd be great for our students it'd be great for our community if we could somehow um, try to get that organized again um, I, I know it's a lot of work, um, right, Nicole and, and everybody, it's, it's a big event, I, I was told. Um, it takes a lot to put together. So I, I'm aware of that. And um, so if we have the time, but I, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth the efforts to get that Civics Academy program going again, um, because great things, great people come from that. Um, we have people that are chairs of commissions right now that took that academy um so that's my positive suggestion is to bring that back boy i spent two minutes on that um i was gonna mention something else positive um oh yeah uh, martin luther king jr day monday i was working 
you know, as a longshoreman out at the Port of Oakland doing this stuff. And um, I go on my lunch break to take a walk at the aquatic park uh, way down there at the end because I like to get some fresh air and take a walk. And there was about a thousand cars out there and they're all lined up in a car parade. And so I go to the front of the parade and there's this big truck with speakers on it and the radio. And I was talking to people and I met an Oakland commissioner and her name's Carol. And so she's an Oakland commissioner and she says she, she knows of Janelle and she's just, she wants to work with Albany collaboratively just on, on everything. And so it was nice to meet somebody and um, so it's just a great social justice day. So bring it on for social justice. All right, keep up the good work, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Pinguillo. Um, I see three, uh, two more hands raised now, besides the Mr. Pinguillo who just spoke. If a uh, city clerk, if you could bring them in. Hi. Um, before the last, this is Beth Beller, not Jim Beller. Um, before the last city council meeting, Jim and I sent an email to the city council members asking about warming centers in Albany. During our uh, last two atmospheric rivers, we saw the vulnerability of some of our shower guests at the Albany Shower Project to extreme weather events, especially for people who don't even have a car to live in. They were cold and wet when they arrived, <clears throat> they warmed while taking showers, and then they had to go right back out into the cold. Council members Peggy McQuaid and Rochelle Nason um, responded to the email, and Isabel LeDuc also responded. I started by uh, contacting Albany Cares and Albany Project Hope. Anne-Marie at Albany Cares was helpful with the agencies and phone numbers. I called the numbers um, while warm and comfortable in our home. What I learned was there wasn't much available for the short term, uh, for short term shelter in extreme weather. Rain, cold, heat, or smoke, I think needs to be included as well. I did learn that uh, several people who um, were able to get shelter for three, three weeks or longer um, by working with Albany Cares. I also called 211 in Alameda and Contra Costa County, where I learned how to access the street outreach program that could lead to housing. After seeing the misery on the faces of some of our guests and knowing that people can die from exposure to cold heat and smoke, and um, that the resources open often that are available often take days or weeks to access, I, um, I'm kind of discouraged and I really feel that Albany needs to um, provide a place short term where people can get on their phones, they can be out of the elements, um, they can try calling shelters to see if they can get a place and they can at least have some uh, relief from the misery of what it is to be out in extreme weather with no place to go. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beller. Else. City clerk, if you could bring in the next attendee with their hand up. Thank you. Hi, this is Margie Marks. Um, I agree complete with, completely with Beth. I have a list of the winter emergency shelters for Alameda County. The closest ones are in Oakland. One of them is on International Boulevard with only 10 beds. The other one is on 29th Street in Oakland. You know, I think that we may have seniors and low-income people who aren't heating their apartments maybe the way they, they should because of the price. And they could use a warming center too. So I, I really think the city, sh city should step up and get have some kind of shelter for people in these severe weather conditions. Uh, we did have a shower client, a new shower client who was parking outside the community center uh, Cares got him in what he calls, his, in his words, a nice room in Oakland. So he got housed this last week, and we really appreciate that. Um, I also want to talk about the senior center. <laughs> I, before COVID, I was a regular, I volunteered once a week at the senior center. I haven't been in there uh, since COVID because they don't require people to have vaccines. They don't check. Seniors are the most vulnerable population. I don't understand why the senior center is not checking 
The other thing, I feel like the city is trying to kill the senior center or something. Teachers that taught at the senior center for years are now told they have to have a business license and their own liability insurance, which is very expensive. Uh, some of these are seniors themselves that live in Albany. They can't afford this kind of thing. Um, I'm sure it was your attorney who told you to tell them to get liability insurance, but it's on city property. I don't understand why the city can't take the liability that these individuals shouldn't have to personally, because they want to teach a class at our senior center, should not have to personally take the liability on themselves. That's ridiculous at the cost of several hundred dollars. So I would really like the council to look into the senior center and um, I don't understand. My synagogue from the day one has required COVID vaccines. They have a list at the door. If you haven't shown proof, you don't get in. It's not that hard. And I, I wish the city would do it for the senior center. I think we need to protect our most vulnerable citizens. And many of us don't want to walk in there right now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morris. Um, we're moving on to the consent calendar now. Uh, the consent calendar is for items that are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion by approval of the consent calendar. The staff recommendations will be adopted unless otherwise modified by the city council. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member or a member of the audience requests removal of the item from the consent calendar. Does any council member desire? Yes, council member Nason. Uh, yes, um, seven eight. Thank you, seven eight. Any other council member desire to move an item from the agenda, consent calendar agenda? No. Does any member of the public desire to remove an item from the consent calendar? Not seeing any hands. Uh, we have just seven eight that's been pulled. Um, it would be helpful if I actually got there and read out what 7-8 is for those in attendance for their convenience. This is authorization to submit application for Caltrans Clean California Program grant funding to establish the East Shore Access Improvement and Litter Abatement Project. Council Member Nason, would you like to? Yeah, this, this is an opportunity for me to ask a question that I've wondered about for many years, and that is, um, why is the road to nowhere open to the public to drive on? Um, I can't really see any legitimate reason anyone would, uh, would use it. And um, I see a lot of, I see many downsides to having it uh, uh, available as a, uh, for whatever sort of um, activities people do down there. Uh, it is always very full of trash um, and lots of dumping. I think at one time, many years ago, someone was actually murdered in that area. You know, it's 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 a it's a scary little bit of Albany. So, how come it it is uh, open to drive down? question for the city manager or possibly and if nobody has that, the answer at their fingertips if there's some historical or legal or contractual issue or whatever it may be i'm happy to take the answer next month and, with the, and we'll be very happy to vote for this in the meantime because i'd love to see it cleaned up i, I could uh, i can answer this um or at least i can provide an, an answer i don't know all the history but my sense oh, all the issues that you see are all the issues that we see as well, and that's what we're hoping to correct with this project. Um, my sense is that um, this was related to access to that uh, industrial building. There's a loading dock um, that, that that's down there, and so it, I think it was designed so that larger trucks can get in and out. Um, I don't know why it needed to be a public street. Um, so I, I, I'm sure there's a history around that, but um, nonetheless, we see all the issues that, that you see and we want to correct it, including putting some lighting in there that will make it more um, attractive in evening hours for bicyclists and pedestrians. Okay, well, I would, uh, I would encourage you to consider 
if we don't have the resources to to keep it, uh, uh, you know, to to keep it patrolled, or or really even if we do, uh, you know, I I just don't see a reason for a car to go down there. I can see why a pedestrian or a a uh, bicyclist would would go down there to to get onto the path, um, but I I can't see why anyone who is not either the railroad or the industrial building uh, why they would have a legitimate reason to take a car down there, and uh, it seems to me if those are the only um, uh, sort of kosher users that perhaps we could you know at some kind of fence. Uh, gate uh, or something that allows pedestrians and bicyclists through, but does not allow cars to access that area, uh, might be a good follow-up to this project. But I applaud, very much applaud this project. Thank you. So just to be clear, a, a gate is a, a central feature of this project. We are putting in a gate and bollards to make it um, accessible only to uh, and the deliveries, East Bay Mud has some facilities they need to get into, and so we're going to restrict access to it and um, still allow bicyclists and pedestrians to go through. But cars will no longer be going down the no. road? No. Oh, okay, good. That I didn't understand. I thought you were working yeah. just at the bottom. No, we're, so it's going, to be, it's going to be placed at some point so that trucks can come in and pull off the road, but, yeah. but it's not going to... It's, it's going to be several feet, not all the way down. Okay, good, good, good. All right, thank you very much. Good to hear. Sure thing. Thank you, Public Works Director Hurley and Council Member Nason for getting clarification on that. Um, there are, uh, I do see a hand raised, which I presume is in response to comments on this item. Um, City Clerk, if you would let the attendee in. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Uh, that's correct. So I was going to say, um, I think that building down there years back, correct me if I'm wrong, um, didn't it used to be like a wildlife or a fish? I remember going in there and they had fish and I think you can adopt cats. I don't know if we're talking about the same building. Um <laughs> I don't know. It's it's the one right down there underneath the <clears throat> the Buchanan overpass, underneath the railroad tracks, down there. Um, you know, just to the right. But the hazard of interrupting Mr. Pinguello, it was a, a pet supply um, business, I believe. Uh, that was a few businesses ago, actually. Yes, that's correct. Are we speaking about the same? Referring to the same place? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, so that used to be a wonderful pet place. I'm not sure what it is now, but I mean, you know, if we're going to do something, it's just going to sit vacant. I don't know what that building is now, but that would be a great homeless shelter or a great warming shelter. You know, it's down by the freeway, kind of where homeless people tend to hang out anyway. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know what's going on with that, but, you know, maybe we could turn that into something useful in albany instead of just closing off the road it's a public street you know once you start taking away you know our public access you know i'm just speaking as a citizen of america you know once you t start taking off away our rights to drive our cars down public streets where we pay taxes on you know that's like trying to take away my social security or something you know i gotta say no to that but I think there should be more more discussion for closing that area off, you know, completely. But if you're going to close it off, you know, whose property is it? Is it cities? Is it Caltrans? Is it private? You mentioned East Bay Mud, um, but I'm I'm really interested in seeing on where this project goes because maybe it could lead to that dirt bike uh, park or something because there's talks of that dirt bike uh, park down there, right? For use for one of those. Um, Caltrans lots. So, all right, well, this is a fun topic and this is definitely a work in progress and I look forward to this project as well. Thank you, Mr. Pinguello. Um, I, I will note that I believe the building, if I'm not behind, is currently occupied by a cut stone countertop um, business. Uh, so it is currently in, in use for its commercial purpose. Um, with that, unless there's any other 
questions? Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? I'll move to approve consent. Seconded. It's been moved by Council Member McQuaid and seconded by Vice Mayor Tiedemann to approve the consent calendar. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council Member Gary? Yes. Mayor Jordan? Yes. Council Member McQuaid? Yes. Council Member Nason? Yes. And Vice Mayor Tiedemann? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, City Clerk. This moves the meeting on to item 10-1, which is consideration of the final draft of the 2021 Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Master Plan. May the council have a staff report. Yes, if you give uh, me a minute, um, Isabel's being promoted. Certainly, thank you, city clerk. Hey, good evening, um, Mayor Jordan and uh, council members. Uh, this final draft of the uh, Parks Master Plan includes uh, modifications based on input received at the December 6th uh, Council meeting. A matrix of the most recent edits is included as attachment uh, three to the staff report, and the most uh, recent uh, Park Master Plan um, has been uploaded to um, the agenda tonight. Um, we've also added some language uh, concerning a CEQA to the resolution and uh, upon approval of the master plan by the city council, a notice of exemption from CEQA will be filed with the county clerk on the basis that the open space plan is not a project as it will not result in any physical impact on the environment. Uh, the consultants are also here this evening to go over uh, the modifications they've made. Um, and if you'd like to bring uh, Brennan Cox and um, David Koo as well. Yes, they're both up here. Okay, great. Thank you. Is that cue for me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I will be sharing my screen here, just trying to find the right document. Okay. Oops, sorry. Pandemonium here at my house with kids getting to bed, but oh man. Okay, we received a number of great uh, comments and feedbacks, and we've done our best uh, to incorporate them into this final document. Um, I thought it would be uh, useful to just go comment by comment, um, and I'm, I probably will highlight a, a, some of these um, as some of them were fairly a little bit lengthy and then others what we can I think um, um, there are very quick ones that we've changed and then if we have any um, if you have any questions I, I guess we could take them item by item just uh, to address those specific comments so um, regarding the Albany bulb uh, there was some language we changed uh, uh, instead of study um, we felt that study was still appropriate, um, the course of action when addressing the future of the a bulb. Um, <clears throat> there was a comment regarding extending the motorist parking um, duration on Buchanan West of freeways. Um, uh, this has been, a, uh, uh, we felt that the action would be in, in the access and circulation improvements, which has uh, been amended to include parking related study and that's on page sorry here is also the pages that we're addressing those um mr cox at the the hazard of interrupting um rather than go through all this i think it would be useful to since since we had all it we had it all in writing and you did such good work there um and you have a family life <laughs> going on um i thought it might be rather useful to ask the council members um, if they have any questions about the material and or if their preference is to actually have you go through it in the manner that you're going through it before you proceed. Sure. Just so that we use our use our time um, effectively. Uh, I can't can't see all the council members right now. Um, what can I do about that? Let's see. I can do that. Do any council members 
There we go. Do any council members have specific questions on the, the edits and the changes that were made in response to council comments? Oh, I, yes, uh, council member McQuaid. Thank you. Um, I, I don't have a, a question, but I do have, have a comment and a suggestion. I don't know if you want those now or after public comment. Uh, but I do appreciate your idea of moving this forward a little quicker. Very good. One vote for for uh, going that route. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I would suggest that we do questions now and, and comments and input after public comment. Uh, does any other council member have any questions regarding what's on that rubric, if you will, or anything else? Seeing none, uh, now would be the time for the public to comment for its NDC comment, should they wish. And you can press your raise hand button, or if you are on a phone, you can press star nine. You have three minutes. City clerk, I see one attendee who has raised their hand. Thank you for admitting them. Hi, uh, this is Jeremiah. I was um, wondering, hopefully, I know I do send uh, city council, I know I do send you a lot of emails. Um, for that, I do apologize. Um, I'm gonna try to, reduce the amount I send you and probably summarize them and keep them concise. So anyway, thank you. Um, but this is regarding, you know, um, <clears throat> the situation, right? So with the bathrooms, like, like let's say the Ohlone Greenway, cause this is the parks um, in open space. And we're trying to get the public bathrooms going. Um, I sent an email because I went online and there's this all safety.net thing. You could buy porta potties and hand wash stations and, and things like that. So I sent you a couple quotes on there. It's a, a veterans owned business. Um, I do, I've, I've talked with the owner, the manager lady. Um, I've already uh, purchased a portable heated shower uh, from them last year. Um, so she gives really good discounts. I think I only paid 50% on that one. Um, so you're a government entity. So um, that's, that's a possibility that the city can own our own porta potties. They're about $700 um, to $1,000. Um, the ADA ones, I think, are about $2,000, but they're huge. Um, the wheelchair can go in there. And um, so we could spend $100,000 on owning these, you know, let's say they're three thousand dollars each. You know, there's thirty porta potties, um, and the city would own them at a one-time fee. And for let's say Solano Stroll, we could just temporarily, you know, reroute them to Solano for one day. You know, take them from the parks or wherever they're at, put them on Solano, and that would cut cost on renting porta potties on Solano Stroll because um, the city would own our own porta potties. Um, they could be put on trailers with wheels and they could be mobile. We could move them around wherever we need to. And that would be great in case there's an earthquake or an emergency with CERT. The city has porta potties. So if this block um, has an earthquake, each block will get their own porta potty, right? I mean, I'm just brainstorming that idea right now in this conversation and this dialogue, but that would be great, right? Um, the city would own their own porta potties. We can keep them at public works. We could, oh, um, we could power wash them and, and everything. Um, so I just want to mention that. And so, yeah, maybe we can get the same company I saw today cleaning the big bellies and the trash can liners down Solano. I just want to give a shout out with my four seconds left. Thank you so much for cleaning those liners. Um, I saw it with my own eyes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Benguela. Bringing it back to council. I recall Council Member McQuaid had some comments. And we'll do Council Member Nason after that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I, I just I want to say, uh, Mr. Cox, to you that I really did appreciate the matrix that you made. It certainly made it easy to understand your uh, process. I, I would, however, like to see a little bit stronger language regarding working with the Ohlone or the Native people on Albany Hill. And I have a suggestion for language. Um, I'm on page 87 of the report. 
and it, uh, let me just read to you what it says right now in my suggestion. While the community suggested hundreds of ideas to improve the Albany parks and open space system, the city is committed to consider the original caretakers of the land and collaborate and explore potential partnerships with the indigenous communities. I think what might be a little stronger, um, because I don't think it's an either or, and I sort of read that as an either or proposition. So if we made it into two sentences, the community suggested hundreds of ideas to improve the Albany parks and open space system period. The city is simultaneously committed to recognize the original caretakers of the land and collaborate and explore potential partnerships with the indigenous community. Slight, slight change, but I think it reads a little stronger. Thank you, Councilmember McQuaid. Uh, Councilmember Nason, and, and certainly we will come back and discuss your suggestion, Councilmember McQuaid. You are muted, Councilmember Nason. <laughs> once again, once again. Uh, sorry, I've got a little dog here and she starts barking, so I have, always have to mute myself. Um, uh, the uh, First, I wanted to start by thanking um, Mr. Cox and Mr. Koo and Groundworks uh, in general for a really, really wonderful job. And, and of course, the Albany staff as well. I think that a really terrific job uh, was done on this master plan and um, on this and, and like uh, Council Member McQuaid, I was really delighted to s the way that you set up the the um, the grid so that we could easily the chart so we could easily see uh, how comments had been responded to, and in general, I think the response to comments was excellent. Um, I have only one lingering concern about what I'm looking at, and it it has to do with the bulb. Um, one of the questions that arises continually among park users is who owns what? Well, there, there's two questions. Who owns what down here and what are the rules? And um, actually, even the park district not too long ago got confused and started putting up signs on Albany property announcing East Bay Regional Park District rules that were to be in effect in Albany that were contrary to City of Albany ordinances. Um, so it's a problem that is an issue for the public and an issue for the agencies themselves. Um, and I myself, after many years of waterfront activism, um, when I did finally get an actual detailed map of who owns what, I was absolutely astonished to, to see where Albany's Buchanan right-of-way actually runs along the neck. So these are um, kind of intricate and important issues. And I think that it would be, and I, I saw the, um, I had suggested some language that kind of gave different, you know, outlined the different pieces of the, the the land down there and i think it was just maybe too long to consider really incorporating that i think that maybe s some kind of appendix or an addition to the city's website uh some kind of cross-reference that would tell people who owns what and what are the rules uh would be a really helpful supplement to this master plan um or it might not be part of the master plan. Maybe it's just something that we put on the city website, but I think that we need to be a lot more transparent about that for the for our park users. There is one issue that um, that's tied in with that, uh, that definitely does relate to the master plan, and it's this. The Ohlone Greenway is treated as a park, and it should be. It's one of our most important and heavily used parks, but, um, my concern is that the Albany Waterfront Trail is not treated as a park in the master plan. Uh, and when I, and, uh, when I say the Albany Waterfront Trail, I mean the bike and pedestrian area uh, that runs from uh, the freeway. Well, a little bit, actually, I, this is one of those those mapping things that I just learned recently. It runs from a little bit, a, a few hundred yards maybe west of the freeway uh, to the 
roundabout at the Albany uh, waterfront. And um, it's actually an important recre recreational resource. It includes the bird watching platforms for people who uh, want to uh, bird watch into the Albany Marine Reserve. Uh, it also has interpretive material that is uh, maintained by the city of Albany. And it's also got landscaping. Um, it, you know, there, there are various aspects to it. Uh, and it's got benches and it's got trash cans. Uh, so it is sort of a linear park type of facility. And it has signs saying the Albany Waterfront Trail. And I, I think it should be um, included in the inventory of parkland. Uh, and I had suggested it be treated as part of what is being called the bulb collectively, all those different areas. Uh, but it seems like it's excluded. And that is one change that I would, uh, if we make further changes, that is one change that I would very much like to make is to incorporate the Buchanan, uh, the Albany Waterfront Trail that parallels Buchanan Street to our inventory of, uh, of parks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember McQuaid. Um, other council members, do you, uh, well, I guess before we, well, yeah, let's do that before I get to mine because I'm in the grass as I usually am. Um, do other council members have any thoughts on what has just been suggested or any other thoughts on the, on the document? All right, seeing none. Um, I'm certainly in favor of those those changes, uh, noting that, yeah, I'm not sure putting all the rules in the parks master plan is exactly where we want them, but I think having a resource outside of this somewhere would be useful because um, rules change and things change. And, and uh, I'm not sure this is the document that people will look at, but I think that's a good suggestion. Um, I support the suggestion to add the, the waterfront trail to the inventory. Um, and council member Coupe's suggested language change. Um, I have some, some items myself, as I said, kind of down on the grass. Um, I do thank staff and the, the consultants for preparing this. Uh, it's, it's quite a document. Um, it came a long ways. I know there was some trepidation, I think about mid, mid flight on it in terms of how it was looking and people maybe couldn't, couldn't quite see the end product that was gonna come. So it's quite a gratifying end product. Thank you for that. Uh, I did notice some um, some errors um, in the maps of names of streets and things that need to be corrected. I'm not sure what the best way to handle that is. I hate to put that in a motion, um, but I would look to city staff for how we handle such things in that regard. And I apologize. I just noticed these at the at the last minute. So if you have any thoughts on a more graceful way to handle that. Um, Mayor Jordan, uh, we've received your uh, comments and uh, they've been incorporated in the plan. So for the purpose of uh, the record, um, I'm not quite sure uh, how we yeah. should move forward, but um, Nicole, do you have a suggestion as to how we should move forward so that, it, that it's mentioned at the meeting? Well, so these were things that I noticed, but I, I just, again, I apologize, I sent over an hour and a half ago. So I don't know if these, if you're telling me that these have been addressed, yes. then that's great. Yeah, they've yeah. been addressed. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, and let's see, so moving on, um, some other items, changes that I would like to see that are not of, of that nature is that, uh, on the system-wide improvements pages, which are pages 90 and 91, um, there are a number of items or areas there that have further information in the guidance section. And I think for a user, it's not would not be obvious that when they go to those pages, that there is expanded information in the guidance section. So it'd be useful to have a reference to the guidance section from the system-wide improvements section so that people, users of the document know to go from one to the other. Um, so that's one suggestion. Um, in that guidance section, there's a there's a section on non-traditional parks, park spaces. And one of those is the uh, planned um, 
uh, what's, what's the right term for it? I guess privately owned public park that we approved on the west side of Adams, I'm sorry, the east side of Adams, I made that mistake before, which led to confusion, the east side of Adams on the 400 block of the street. And I appreciate that that was included in the non-traditional open space list. Um, that list though on, and this is on page 154, says is headed with public right-of-way open space opportunities. And this is not a public right-of-way open space opportunity. So either the name of that list needs to be changed or there needs to be a separate list created that has a title, a heading that is appropriate to that particular um, approved park. So I don't know, again, what the easiest way to handle this is. Uh, I think we could just leave it to staff. I know that um, provided as direction to staff, I know the Planning and Zoning Commission and other commissions do that um, at times and it seems like a, a reasonable way to go. Oh, Mary and, Martin, if I could just jump in, I have a can you clarify that I'm on page 150, you're on 154, is that right? Yeah, so you can go ahead and share the your screen if you want. Sure. <laughs> Make this less abstract for everybody. So. Ah, interesting, okay. So this is a, okay, so this is already, this is what, uh, yeah, one of the corrections. So yeah, you do work fast. Okay, <laughs> it's just changed in the last hour. So thank you very much. Um, and another item is that the, well, maybe this has already been corrected too, but I, I do need to, to see this to confirm. Um, the easement that's on the south bank of Cerrito Creek between San Pablo and Creekside Park um, in the, the prior posted version was shown only extending between San Pablo and Adams. And that's on page, 32. Um, so I don't know if that has been updated to show it extending all the way to Creekside Park. If you could show that, that would. That has been revised as well. Okay. Brennan, you could go. I'm, I'm hopping there. Hopping. I'm hopping. Okay. okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Jumping around. Okay. Great. Much appreciated. Um, I would like to see that easement also reflected on page 95, just because that's the project page. Yes. And otherwise, you know, people who, as a user of one of these documents, before I was on council or a few types of documents, you know, I go to the projects page, kind of skip a lot of the, the background information. So if it isn't on the projects page, then I probably wouldn't see it. Um, so I think it's useful to have it on the, the actual project page. And maybe it already is, and I have to do something on my end so I can actually see. Okay, great. So, wonderful, thank you. All right, moving along. Um, let's see if I had anything else. Oh yeah, the, the only other item that I don't think I handed off, but I noticed was on the active transportation connections map, which I think is on the very last page of the document. Um, it shows the Cornices Creek Trail going essentially straight through to the waterfront. And while that is notionally in our active transportation plan, um, I think it might be more instructive to actually show what is being constructed now, which is a connection to the Bay Trail from the Cornices Creek Trail uh, via Gilman and a bridge that's being built over the freeway. Um, so I would suggest that that adjustment be, be made so that you know, that that reality is captured in the document. Like say they're building that multi $10 million project now. And with that, that's, that's all I have. Um, so I think that would be the only change that's left of all the ones that I had on my list. I appreciate you working so quickly. Uh, I see Councilmember McQuaid has her hand raised. Please go ahead. Thank you. Well, one of the problems i think with doing something like this is the more we look at it the more we pick at it um so i'll pick this a little bit as i was looking for where you, where you were i i realized on page 144 it says public art memorials and they have the the three public art project the terrace park um memorial park and ocean view park I'm not sure memorial is, is the right word, and certainly someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're simply public art installations, exhibits, 
I, I don't think they're memorializing anything. They were part of the original public or an earlier public art project that, that we did. Um, uh, yeah, Commissioner McQuaid, that was a deep discussion we've had even as a team that these were memorials. Um, but as we were researching them thoroughly, we realized they are memorializing uh, whether it be the uh, the Gill family for Rose Wave, or the, uh, the the neighborhood for the tile mural, and as well as number six Long Song Earth sculptures memorializing and honoring veterans. So, yes, it was kind of tough to make the call, but we think they're appropriate. Um, we'd be happy to have more discussion if if needed. But that that's kind of how we approach the three public art pieces. No, I, I'm happy with that response. Thank you very much. And I won't look at it anymore, pick anymore. I would like, uh, uh, Councilmember McQuaid, you were the, the, which you were totally fine with changing the Ohlone uh, text. Where, which page was that on the, I couldn't. I'm find. sorry, it was on page 87. And Commissioner McQuaid, I should have, uh, I should have stepped in. We did also include your language. We think we thought it was appropriate and gave oh, okay. it a little bit more confidence. So uh believe that is reflected in the last line there, the last two lines there. Great. Thank you very much. No problem. Wow, almost, almost real time. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> It'd be fast, but not real time. Yeah. I, I also am impressed. Yeah. Um Thank you, Mr. Cox and Mr. Koo. Uh, with that, I might actually take the liberty of making a motion since I've been trying to track what has been done and what, what needs to be done. Um, so I will move, uh, I will move resolution 2022-08 to adopt the 2021 Parks Recreation Open Space Master Plan. And, with the additions of um, adding the Albany Waterfront Trail to the inventory, um, potentially as a part of the Bulb and Buchanan easement item, and showing the route that's being constructed between Cordonesis Creek and the Bay Trail for people cycling and, and walking. And I certainly welcome any any friendly amendments if I missed anything there. Yes, Councilmember Nason. Would you um, be receptive to also, or perhaps this would be a separate motion, but um, providing direction to the staff to put an accurate, uh, accurate detailed map of the city's holdings at the waterfront and the city's rules uh, for um, it, its ordinances for the waterfront? Um, on the city's website. I, I'm certainly amenable, I think, for clarity. I, I prefer that that's a separate motion. Okay. Thank you. I'm not seeing... I'll second your motion. Thank you, Councilmember McQuaid. Um, is there any more discussion? Not seeing any more discussion. Uh, city Clerk, will you please call the council? Mayor Jordan? Yes. Councilmember McQuaid? Yes. Councilmember Nason? Yes. Vice Mayor Tiedemann? Yes. And Councilmember Gary? Yes, thank you. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councilmember Nason. And I'd like to move that we give direction to the staff uh, to put on the city's website uh, detailed, correct maps showing the city's holdings at the waterfront and the city's ordinances. Um, uh, for uh, park users' uh, conduct at the waterfront. So I have, a, I have a quick question. Where would someone who doesn't have access to the internet find this information if the only place we're putting it is on the city's website? That's an excellent question, and there's lots of things that I'm not sure that anybody's going to get at. Uh, if it's not on the website, I do think that the Albany Library uh, is the appropriate repository um, and should hold in 
written form for the public uh any any city documents that uh that are on the website but not otherwise available uh but um i think that that is uh something i would leave to the city staff and library folks to uh consider it is important to and and you know visually impaired all they're all different kinds of issues uh i believe that the albany library still does have um uh, laptop rentals as well as uh, free Wi-Fi, so they do a lot to make internet access available to everyone who wants it. Can we amend that and have staff look into areas uh, around that waterfront to put information if it's available in a smaller section? I don't know, just some something to look at and consider. Um, Council Member Nace would know better than I, but but to my knowledge, things don't survive out there long, typically. Yeah, um, right, right now, we don't have a, a great place for that. Um, although I, I think that that's part of, that's one of the things that um, is contemplated coming out of this plan is um, uh, a more secure and useful communications kiosk for the city to make uh, uh, information like this available. And unfortunately, one thing about this, it's not, it's not like maps that you can look at and say, oh, yes, it, it's hard to describe, but the maps, what the maps show is a very complex ownership pattern that does not make it easy to tell whose land you are on at any given time. Uh, but it is detailed information that I think is pr in, uh, probably of interest more to the the more dedicated park user. So it might those might not be the maps that would make sense to put up in a kiosk in the park. But it would make a great deal of sense to have it available to whoever might be interested who comes into the library or city hall. Thank you, Councilmember Nason. I'm. I'm realizing uh, that we we adopted a a procedure of um, having a council member who who has a referral concept to interact with staff about it, so we could have some concept yeah. of the amount of work that would be involved. Uh, Why so don't we bring this back another day? It's a very good point, and maybe we could make some progress on the kiosk as well. Do it in the same uh, item uh, a little later in the year. Thank so I, I will withdraw my motion. Yeah, and I, I'm, uh, well, thank you. Thank you for that, and for your, your graciousness on that. Um, another topic I'm, I'm just going to drop out there not to take action on, but uh, ever since I moved to the East Bay and learned about the Ohlone Greenway in the early 80s, um, I always wondered if, if the name of that feature was given uh, in consultation with the first peoples of the area. I have no idea if it is or not. Um, so I will bring an item back that potentially the, the ad hoc committee that worked with the uh, Confederated Villages of Lishan previously, um, if they're willing or other members are, are willing to take up a discussion with them regarding um, their preferences for the name of that feature. Yes, Council Member Nason. I'd be happy to participate in that because I was around uh, back in the day uh, and uh, Malcolm Margolin would probably be the person to talk to about how how the name uh, came about and uh, I, I would be happy to reach out to him. Okay, well, yeah, so maybe you can just take that as a as a personal action item. I will. And thank great. You. All right. Well, I, I think again, uh, Groundworks for your work and staff. It's been a long, long haul, over a year, and uh, appreciate it very much. Mayor, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Cox has his uh, just, virtual hand okay, raised. Yeah, I, okay, thank you. Yeah, I didn't know if it was, uh, you, you know better than that now. I sort of was presuming it was a leftover, but. Yes, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody, uh, to specifically Isabel, uh, Mark, and Jeff, and helping us, uh, you know, put this document together. Um, all of the community input that we got was fantastic um, from the pros commission to all of you folks. So it's, it's been a real uh, a joy putting this together. And I, I really thank you for all of your time reviewing it. Um, so great. Best of luck. Thank you.
on to implementation. Yes. Thanks, City Manager Luke. And with that, we move on to the next item, it's item 10 2, follow up on community satisfaction and racial equity survey services contract award. May the council have a staff report. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, this item follows up on council direction provided to staff at your last meeting on January 3rd. Regarding the proposal by Probolsky Research, uh, specifically the council asked for the firm to provide additional depth regarding their experience with racial equity work. You'll see that that was submitted by the consulting firm and is included as an attachment to your staff report. I will note that there is no commentary from staff on what has been submitted. We have not analyzed it. And while we carry forward the first item one under the staff recommendation with regard to retaining the services, um, that's a weak re recommendation at this point based on the concerns raised to date. Um, we have included the second item under the staff recommendation, should the council be more inclined to focus specifically on racial equity and whether that include the focus on a survey or potentially a more extensive racial equity engagement program that includes a survey, um, perhaps yet to be determined a little bit as we work through some of the nuances and details with really um, capturing the interest and trying to understand the collective interest on this topic. So I appreciate your patience as we've worked through this and tried to respond to the dynamic interests related to this topic. Uh, for a small city, it's an endeavor and it's one that we're looking forward to working on together. Uh, just a refresher on the background of how we've gotten here. Um, feels like a while ago now and I certainly respect those feelings uh, on September 7th of 2021, the council received a request from the SEJC specifically requesting implementation of a racial equity survey. That came back to the council a few times now with regard to trying to determine a way to also incorporate community satisfaction coupled with racial equity survey. Um, we've seen the outcome of that. I, don't think it's the direction that will work based on the interest expressed to date. I may take a little bit of a lead in saying that, but I also wanna be cognizant of the policy direction and interest of the council and concerns we've heard from active community members. So I'll focus more specifically on item two in your staff report. Again, this probably has, um, opportunity to be further refined based on the preference of the council. Uh, but basically it gives you some general parameters of it going back and figuring out exactly what is needed for um, engaging with our community on the topics of racial equity. Um, is it a survey? Is it some um, coupled with some other type of extensive engagement program? Um, probably a menu thereof and likely something to be informed further by the most uh, competitive and experienced agencies or service providers in this realm. Um, one option is that we prepare more, you know, we dial it back a bit to prepare a request for qualifications. And I underscore the difference between qualifications and a proposal because the qualifications will allow us to identify exactly what the experience is of those inclined to provide this service for the city. And that could give us an opportunity to have a smaller subset of folks, companies experienced in this work um, provide, provide their sense of what a proposal would look like and how to best accomplish the goals that may be expressed by the council in this regard. And certainly engagement with the council, um, you know, usually this is in the form of a subcommittee. So that's included as part of this option too. Um, 
two members of the council can be on that subcommittee as selected by the city council. Other than that, everything in the staff report is basically responsive to previous iterations and conversations. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, I thought I would keep my report brief and really just look for a direction of the council on next steps. Thank you, city manager. And I, I appreciate the work that's gone to it, gone into it and the, the road we've been on. Um, I think in some ways, uh, and this is no characterization of staff, but it's emblematic of some of the systemic issues that we are actually seeking to address um, and learn about with this survey. So do any council members have um, questions at this time? Uh, yes, Council Member Nason. I'm just wondering, when did we last do a survey on satisfaction with city services? That's a great question. Uh, in my history with the city, which is about 16 or so years now, we have not done one. We have only done, done voter polling um, mm -hmm. at least three to four times now. And that includes a general satisfaction question at, at the beginning that we always look to. Um, but in terms of department to department to department services that are front facing to the community, we have not done one. Thank you. Thank you. Does any other council member have a question following on? No? Uh, yes, council member Nam McQuaid. Thank you. Um, I don't at this point have a question, but I do have a process question. I guess that'll, I'll make that into a question. Um, it seems like there's definitely two paths here and it seems to me to make sense for the council to figure out which path we want to go down and then discuss from there rather than sort of this scattershot discussion of both at the same time, if, if that makes sense to you. Um, and certainly that can come after public comment, but it just seems like once we figure out what we want to do, then the questions come and the comments come through that. If you understand what I'm trying to yeah, say. I do understand what you're saying. And I'm, I'm a little torn because I, I normally we would do that in deliberation, but I do think that uh, attendees' comments might better inform us if they had a, a sense of which direction the council was inclined to go. Um, I wish I could pull the attendees on what their preference is, but I can't, so I'm going to have to make a clutch decision. Um, yes, Councilmember Nason. I I'm sorry. No, no. Please finish. I didn't oh, okay. Interrupt. Uh, so I I'm, I am actually inclined to discuss which direction that the council is more interested in at this time, so that attendees, when they comment, they can comment on their thoughts on that that particular direction, because otherwise they're somewhat commenting on a, in a vacuum. And I know from when I was not on this body and in that position, that was not an not an easy position to be in. Um, so I don't know if any other council members have thoughts on whether we should deliberate that now or, or wait till after public comment. Yes, Council Member Nason. Yeah, I just wanted to, to note that we're talking, there was reference to both uh, aspects of the survey. And I wanted to point out that there are really three that are pretty distinct. One is customer satisfaction in general. Um, and that's a very routine thing that a lot of cities do to ask people about, you know, a range of services and whether they're they're good with all of them or not. Um, and then there is the uh, the polling for an upcoming um, uh, uh, whatever funding mechanism we might pursue. And personally, I think those two should probably be separate because of the sort of uh, potential for being something of a, a push, you know, survey. It can can look and feel a little bit like a push survey if you mix them together. And then the third, uh, really, to me, pretty distinct issue is uh, the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, you know, from looking at a lot of correspondence and everything, it's not even clear that a survey is everyone's number one objective right now that pe some people at least are thinking uh, that there might be other things that the city should pursue. So um, I, I want to just note that and suggest uh, my own inclination 
would be to do these things separately. I recognize that there are efficiency gains uh, from combining them and using the same people, uh, but I see a lot of really good reasons to keep them separate. So just one one person's perspective. Thank you for those framing comments, Councilmember Nason, and I'm gonna take that as a vote to uh, do a little bit of deliberating now to sort of frame up where we might be headed so that attendees can, can understand that and comment whether they think we're headed in the right direction or not. Um, are there any other votes one way or the other? Or yes, Vice Mayor Tiedemann. Um, yeah, I, I definitely uh, say, I think deliberating now is a good idea so that commenters have uh, something to respond to. Um, I definitely say that I think going towards an RFQ um, uh, and developing a new one uh, would be the right way to go and discussing uh, the possibility of a community survey or voter survey uh, separately as a separate item um, would definitely be the right way to go. Councilmember Gary or McRae, care to offer any thoughts or, or say no later? Not at this time, thank you. Councilmember McRae? Yeah, I hadn't, and I mean, no, I hadn't really thought about the option of doing two separate things. And I, I don't know if we can afford to do that. Um, but to do the DEI work as a community outreach. Um, and, I, and I'm really struggling with the right words here. So please, please forgive me. And then the community or the customer satisfaction survey would be a separate, a separate item. I don't know if that's even possible or if that's something we should leave on the table. Um, Thank you. Yeah, for my part, I I, um, I feel that I made a mistake in trying to, to bring all these pieces together. Um, I think it, it might the waters because following the, the comments and questions that Council Member Gary uh, made at the last meeting led me to finally engage what I know about statistics from my day job and realize these require very different methodologies statistically if they are to be a survey. Um, so for my part, you know, I, I, I rue that I didn't see that ahead of time. Um, in general, I'm supportive of going an RFQ route and really just prioritizing which was where this all started, the, the racial equity survey, and we'll deal with the rest of it via another, uh, potentially another contract. Um, I think Provolsky probably is actually a good firm um, for say voter polling, which is probably our, our immediate need more so than the community satisfaction, uh, given where we are in the time cycle. Um, and I do appreciate them putting together the additional material at the request of the council. Um, but so yeah, I do favor separating these out into different contracts. Uh, so with that, um, we have four attendees who have their hands raised. Uh, City Clerk, if you could let in uh, the first attendee. Hello, good evening. My name is Casey Zapata. Um, I sit on the Social and Economic Justice Commission and also am part of a racial equity subcommittee that the SEJC has um, convened um, to look at and continue, as you all are doing, move forward the work of Nicole Anderson and Associates. Um, and so I, tonight I want to, I'm very encouraged to hear that you all are uh, considering moving to this sort of second part uh, on the screen. Um, the survey that you're discussing has value, but it really only has value in as much as it qualifies or quantifies the experience of black and brown people in the city of Albany. It is not if taught to do anything but is to equate it to all lives matter. So this is a, a survey specifically, not only of black people that live here and brown people that live here, but people that move through Albany, people that don't live here, but experience the city of Albany. And so it's critical that we collect that information. And I believe this second piece of an RFQ could perhaps get us moving and working with an organization that has familiarity with the um, with the issues that you all are discussing, which are very deep and systemically intertwined in the city of Albany. 
Um, I want to also say that um, uh, I believe that um, it's critical that you all consider number, uh, the other thing that I wanted to share was that, or advocate for is that you um, have um, council member Gary on the subcommittee. It's critical that council member Gary be part of the work that happens behind the scenes, which is we know what happens with subcommittee work. Um, so that uh, she take part in the process. And lastly, uh, I want to say that the, uh, the Social and Economic Justice Commission is really excited and uh, eager to work <laughs> with council on this issue. Um, again, hopefully with, um, with commission or with council member Gary and others uh, or another person. Um, and lastly, the, I really encourage you all to um, send another RF, or actually not send another RFP out, to go ahead and do, as it says on here, the, um, the request for qualifications. Um, and so I had a whole other set of comments, but I'm, I'm actually encouraged to hear where you all are heading. And I think it's critical that you understand how complicated um, this issue is, and hiring Probalski would would not show your um, commitment to that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zapata. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Jeremiah, uh, Commissioner on SEJC. Uh, just for purpose of discussion, if, if I happen to go over my three minutes, I hope you will kindly grant me a little extra light fare. Um, I don't intend to go over three on purpose. Um, you know, I did some math. So $57,000 divided by 365 days a year. Okay, here, do it with me. $57,000, take out your calculator. $57,000 divided by 365 days a year, divided by eight hours a day, equals, $19.52. So that's a job for somebody every single day, seven days a week, eight hours a day, getting paid $19.52 an hour. The math is right there. <laughs> are we, what are we going to get out of the survey? Are we going to get a year's worth? Are we going to get every, are we going to get eight hours a day for every day for a whole year? Are we going to get that much information or are we just going to get somebody that does all these government contracts? Th this company does all the other cities. This is just another city. You know, this is just another city. This is just another contract, just more money in the pocket for every company. This is, I don't know. I, I actually, I called this company. I, I think I spoke to the mister himself. He was kind of uh, unresponsive. He wouldn't tell me anything and it's like really untransparent, not even like cooperative. So I kind of got a cold feeling. It just kind of seems like this is exactly what's systemically wrong. Here's just another person being greedy and selfish trying to get $57,000 off of a survey. And what is a survey? It's what people think. It's someone's opinion. And whose opinion are we trying to get? And are these people really qualified for that? I'm not sure. Maybe they have a good outline for surveys or they have good questions. I don't know what makes them good, qual really good qualified. Um, but I don't know. It seems like I've seen a lot of other surveys in Albany. I just did another survey um, the other day, last week. I think we mentioned earlier tonight. Um, there's all these surveys. And I don't know. Maybe we just do that for free. But I think we could um, do a lot with this money. I mean, that's creating an eight hour job for someone every day for $20 an hour. So that's a lot of money for one survey or whatever survey. I don't know. It's just too much. It's just too expensive. It's $57,000. You know, you could buy land or, or something. I don't know. So just, just consider, um, who this company is, how many, how many other city contracts they got. And, uh, three minutes are up. I appreciate your comment. 
Hi, this is Margie Marks. Um, I would really prefer that you took option number two. I feel like all of us, and especially you, the leadership, are in a unique place and time in history right now. Um, the meetings that have taken place in Albany in the last year and a half, I went to all of them, every single one uh, that dealt with the police or with, you know, turned into dealing with race. Uh, there were listening sessions. I went to all of them. I was on the SCJC. I was at all those meetings. I went to a listening session with 25 high school students talking about race in Albany. And still, I walked through the city. I've never seen a Black Lives Matter sign on any public land in Albany, and, and it makes me really sad. Um, but that's, you know, I just think you need to think back on those meetings and the people that spoke up at those meetings and what they're going through. And, um, you know, I think it's really important to take advantage of this time when the whole country is kind of going through this racial reckoning that Albany, you know, you start some of these steps so we can go through it. Uh, one thing I'm doing in the housing element I really wanted to include the history of black line, the redlining that took place in the city. I think, you know, that that talks about housing today, you know, what went went on years ago. So I would really urge you to take step number two and take your time with it and really think about this the comments from the citizens of this city. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marks. Uh, am I, um, yes. are you hearing me? Welcome. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate your, uh, moving for an RFQ, uh, and I'm assuming, uh, you will have, uh, suggestions from people who know, uh, the, the field that you can, uh, seek out. Uh, qualified people, um, and I I uh, agree with the comments uh, sent to you by um, Mr. Grossman and um, oh my goodness and Julie Winkelstein uh, and uh, I I hope uh, Council Member Gary. Uh, will be on the subcommittee so should she choose to accept <laughs> being part of it um and lastly i just heard something on the news that los angeles uh has an office of racial equity so um hopefully uh albany is going to have a, a city agency that uh ensures racial equity in the town so um anyway encourage you on moving forward and thank you thank you miss madison not seeing any other hands raised bringing it back to council uh council member gary i think i saw you raise your hand i think council member, i'm sorry vice mayor tiedemann was first so i can go after him Thank you. Vice Mayor Tiedemann? Sure. Um, just to echo uh, Mayor Jordan earlier, I think, you know, this suffered from a little bit of mission creep, uh, our mistake for uh, wrapping it all up together. I think it's the right move to, to try again, get it right this time, because as the mayor also noted in our last meeting about this, the, the most important thing here is for people to have confidence in this and to be comfortable with it. Uh, and whatever we can do to make that happen is definitely the right move. Um, I just want to note, I, as per my a conversation with uh, our city manager earlier, and city manager or uh, city attorney can jump in if I get anything wrong or to add more detail, but I think there was some idea of having both a SEJC subcommittee and a council subcommittee working on an R possible RFQ. The problem being that that gets us into weird Brown Act territory and we might not be able to do that. So we may be facing a choice of an either or. Um, and seeing as any sort of RFQ result 
would come back to us for both launching the RFQ as well as for approving uh, whatever application we hypothetically accepted from it, I feel quite comfortable with uh, the council's role in this and think that as the diversity, equity, inclusion survey part of this and what it's used for is really the baby of the SEJC subcommittee uh, that suggested this in the first place, uh, I think it's, it's vastly more important for them to be involved in the development of this RFQ and the selection of any applicants than it is any of us. Um, as much wisdom as we have to provide. Um, so if it's a choice between them, which, which I think it is, um, I think you know the, the people on the ground, the people who said, we need this data, here's why we need it, and here's what we should do, uh, meaning the subcommittee who suggested this in the first place from SEJC, are the right people to be involved in you know, writing this new RFQ if we go down that road, which sounds like we're leaning towards. Thank you, Vice Mayor Tiedemann. Mayor Jordan, I, thank you so much. I just wanted to um, thank you for bringing this back, this item back on uh, the agenda. But I also want to um, just agree with the recommendation to look at the qualifications of the individuals. I spoke with the city manager earlier and basically told her, you know, we can, I know the consensus is get more black and brown uh, contractors and things like that, but understanding just having those contractors available and actually doing the work are two separate things. So I think it's best for us to look and identify who's gonna best fit the need for our city and what we need in this city. And then that's how we'll be able to move forward and collect any information. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Nason. Yeah, um, I want to say first that, that the RFQ, um, leading with an RFQ makes a great deal of sense to me. Um, but I would go further to say uh, there might be work that, that we need to do uh, and I, I say we broadly, the city, I'm including staff and SEJC, uh, that we may have have even more preliminary work to do before we do an RFQ. Um, and that would be looking at, do we really, are we ready? Do we want to do all these three, these three different um, surveys? And uh, or do we want to maybe stagger them over time or whatever it may be? Um, and I think that there are some, some points being made. For example, uh, I agree with um, uh, Ms. Zapata, uh, and I think that I talked about this a little at our last meeting, that um, we may get on the, the um, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion side, we may need to be talking to people who are not here in Albany. Um, and I'm thinking both um, uh, uh, black people who are perhaps not comfortable coming into Albany, if that is, if there is truth to that. Uh, and we, we kind of need to know that people who are choosing St. Mary's over our public schools. Uh, we appear to have pretty dramatically different demographics uh, in the village in coming than, than we've had in the past. And all of these involve um, people who may not be uh, our traditional residential stakeholders here. So I think that, uh, that this really, the SEGJC portion, the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion portion should be peeled off and dealt with uh, by the SEJC. And I'd like to see them come forward as a committee. A, a, a subcommittee is great, but I'd like to see them come forward with their thoughts before we even set up our subcommittee personally. I think it's more appropriate that way. That's one point. Um, on the uh, the polling for a uh, uh, for a funding mechanism, we haven't even had conversations yet about what those funding mechanisms might that we would as a elected body that we would consider putting forward. Um, and I've not been 
uh, I've been involved one way or another in all of the campaigns in the years that I've been here, and I, I have not seen those that polling be of all that much uh, use. I really don't, I question whether it actually is necessarily going to be worth it, depending on what we, what direction we decide to go in. Um, I love the idea of a satisfaction survey, but I think, you know, if we've been many years without it, it's something that we could do um, at another time, and and that that would be, uh, that would be absolutely fine. Or we could go ahead with that, especially if we decide if we return the DEI survey for more work to SEJC, and we perhaps do not end up doing um, polling on uh, our financing mechanisms, then maybe we go forward with a customer satisfaction sort of survey. I don't, I'm, I'm not saying necessarily that we do any one of these things, but I, I would, the one piece that I would say very strongly is let's ask the SEJC to consider some of those issues about non-residents and the need to get input from them. Um, and let's, uh, let's engage in some conversation about our funding potential before we uh, talk about uh, engaging polling on, uh, on measures we may not even end up putting on the, the ballot in any case, regardless of polling. So I'm bottom line, I'm not even sure we're ready to put out an RFQ uh, on, on any of these three uh, ideas. Thank you. Councilmember Nason, and Councilmember Gary. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Well, so what I'm not in favor of is a stalling on this issue. Uh, I think we've dragged our feet long enough. At the end of the day, the our, uh, SCJC has presented something to us, and I think we need to act on it. Now, coming together with the RFQ, making sure that we have the, the questions we need, whether it's SCJC coming in and working with someone on the council and making sure that the questions are reflective to what the, the citizens, the people of the community would like to see. It's not about us. It's about, again, it's about the people of the community who wants this to happen and we need to act upon it. So dragging our feet, trying to figure out which um, survey to do at which time, that should not even be a, an, an option. At the end of the day, let's focus on what is presented before us and then we can move from there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Gary. Vice Mayor Tiedemann. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I, I, Councilmember Nixon, I take your point. I think the the good thing here is that what we're doing isn't necessarily launching the RFQ. It's saying it's directing staff to prepare it. And if that direction comes with working from the get-go uh, with the SEJC subcommittee that suggested this, um, which some of our commenters who suggested some things here, I think, are members of, um, then we get the benefit of them, you know, uh, being able to offer input on what this survey should be, uh, who would and who should be included, including, uh, you know, people who use, who come through the city but might not live in it, um, as well as you know, answering this question that's central to the the motion or the action suggested of, you know, what is the survey really look like? What's most useful? And the, uh, I think the SGC has an idea of what they want, um, and I want that to be implemented. So I think directing staff now to uh, start drafting an RFQ um, with their input seems like a great move. And then once, you know, the, the, the actually selecting survey questions and anything like that doesn't come until, you know, we've got a actual firm we're going to work with, um, which then we would, you know, of course, give more input on, I think. Um, but right now, I think all we're talking about is direct staff to create the RFQ with input um, from the people who suggested it, which I think is a super easy thing for us to do and seems to have pretty market agreement from our public commenters and most of the people here. That that makes sense to me. Um, preparing an RFQ. Hold on a moment, we've got um, Councilman McQuaid is. Oh, sorry. Hands raised. Yeah, sure. Councilman McQuaid. Thank you, and no offense taken there. Um, yes, I think I certainly agree with Councilmember Gary, and that's what I was going to say: is let's not push this back to in any way. let it sounds like we've come to an agreement that we're going to do the RFQ. So I think it's important to start moving forward with it. Um, I, 
I do think that it's a council responsibility to do this work. And so I would like to see a subcommittee of the council um, to work with staff to do the RFQ, make sure I get it right, the RFQ. Um, you know, we've certainly, we've heard from the SCJC, they've given us great information. They can certainly provide more information to the council subcommittee. I understand we, they can't work together, but they can give them information, I believe. Um, but have staff and a council subcommittee work together on this. And, you know, I would suggest if she's willing that council member Gary and Mayor Jordan be, be the subcommittee. Um, and to, to get this moving, I have less interest in the ballot measure poll at this point. And at, th at this exact point, I don't think that we need to think too much about a satisfaction survey, but I don't want to lose that. I think it's important since we haven't ever done one, and I think it's important to do one and keep track of it over, over time, that we want to keep that at least on the medium burner, um, not even the back burner, but on a medium burner. So that would be my recommendation, a subcommittee of the council working with staff on developing an RFQ. Thank you, Councilmember McQuaid. I, I can say for my part, that's a, a good idea. Um, I'm keep a running list of things. And uh, so I will put a community satisfaction survey on my list for the next strategic plan. Um, obviously can't speak for that council, but that's something I could try to take up there. I, I know you will no longer be on the council that time, but at least I can provide some assurance that, that the idea won't get lost institutionally. Uh, Councilmember Mason. Yeah, I, I wanted to clarify something um, about my remarks when I said that uh, we that m my concern about going forward with the RFQ was that we were going to go forward with an RFQ for someone who could do both the polling and the DEI piece. And I think that those are, are different pieces. And if we want to get... Um, uh, broader a broader selection and representation of people with the skills to do the DEI piece we're going to be limiting ourselves if we say we only want to hear from the people who uh, also would be able to do the um, the polling for the funding piece because those are different uh, different those could you could very well have a highly qualified uh consultant in the field of diversity equity and inclusion who does not have the requisite skills in the area of uh polling uh on financing measures for local government so um if we're talking about separating them i would be supportive of going forward with uh, the diversity, equity, and inclusion um, RFQ, if that is uh, what the SEJC folks are are asking for. Although I, I thought I heard something different from Ms. Zapata, but I, I could be wrong about that. Uh, if people feel that there is a readiness to go forward uh, and we're leaving out the polling for funding, um, then I would be very supportive of the direction that uh, Council Member McQuaid laid out. Thank you, Council Member Nason. With uh, Vice Mayor Tiedemann's assent, maybe to, to help facilitate the conversation, I will make a motion that, that we only focus on the racial equity survey at this time and that we set aside the um, voter polling and the community satisfaction survey so we can at least nail down that part and move on to the logistics of how we get this done. I see thumbs, that, but no second. Yeah. Sorry. Is that a motion? That is a motion. Uh, I second, I don't know if Vice Mayor, did you second? No, you so, go ahead. It has been moved by Mayor Jordan and seconded by Council Member Gary um, that we focus solely on the racial equity survey at this time and, and set aside the other two surveys. City Clerk, will you uh, poll the council, please. Um, council, um, Vice Mayor Tiedemann? Yes. Council Member Gary? Yes. Mayor Jordan? Yes. Council Member McQuay? 
Yes. And Council Member Nason. Yes. Thank you. Carries. Thank you. And uh, hopefully that's helpful to, to keep us moving in the right direction. So going around in circles. Um, Vice Mayor Tiedemann. Um, yeah, I just want to respond to Council Member Quaid's comment. I, you know, I, I think if we go the direction of having a council subcommittee, there it can it will be useful. I just wanted to note, in you know, respectful disagreement, um, that it is a council. It is this falls within the council purview of development of something like this. And I think we exercise that through our approval of it when it comes back and it's been developed, as well as our acceptance of whoever is selected. And I think the issue that we have really illustrated through this process um, and how people have felt and responded to this item as it's moved uh, or hasn't moved um, is that we didn't have community buy-in in the initial development of this and that that never got fixed as it went on and how we ended up with well we selected someone from an RFP but you know we haven't gotten the trust we haven't gotten everyone's buy-in we haven't gotten the most important which is the people most affected and the people who requested this in the first place um so you know if it's council's will that we have a subcommittee about it i'm perfectly happy for the ones suggested i'm just saying that i think you know we don't we didn't participate directly in the development of the rfp in the first round of this i don't think there's any reason why we have to participate directly in the development of an RFQ, especially when, if we have a choice between us and SEJC, it seems like we could have a lot better, especially if you know we're just funneling information from the SEJC people who suggested this through our subcommittee to the design of this to get them what they want and what they need. Um, you know, I I just think that we could cut a lot of. Uh, cut a lot of time uh, by just having us directly from the people who suggested it. And that I think we, we are fulfilling our duty in reviewing this when we will accept it fully and vote on it. Thank you, Vice Mayor Tiemann. Council Member Nason. I, uh, I agree with that. I think that it is appropriate for the SCJC to make, a, as a whole, to make a recommendation. Um, I do want to emphasize that the recommendation should be a policy recommendation, and it is still, it still needs to be a staff function. There are legal issues around contracting. Uh, there are, there's, for many reasons, I think that the staff ultimately has to do the work of preparing the RFQ, but the SEJC should be um, uh, giving the council its policy recommendation on what we should be seeking in such an RFQ. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman McQuaid. Thank you. Um, that seems a little different than what we had originally talked about. Maybe I'm not quite understanding you. I thought the subcommittee, whichever subcommittee, be it the council or the SEJC, was going to work directly with staff to come up with the RFQ. And what you're saying, I'm not hearing that. Can, can you help me out? Vice Mayor Tiedemann? So that's that's more my intention, uh, given you know that I think the standard way of doing this is to have a, a subcommittee to work directly with staff. I think that's the easiest way to do it, and I think that still retains a policy recommendation to the council because whatever staff creates with consultation with an SEJC subcommittee, it comes back. It necessarily comes back to us for final approval to launch the actual RFQ. Um, so I think we're we're, you know, trying to figure out details here, but I, I think having the subcommittee work on this and then work with staff and come to us for approval keeps all of the best features here. Thank you, Vice Mayor Team and Councilmember Gary. Um, this question is for the city attorney. So, with the we're putting this together, this group to work with staff. Would it be okay if one council person work? And the reason why I'm asking about that is when it comes to 
things as simple as acronyms, right? Um, using a person of color and BPOC, those things are offensive and can be offensive to, to people in the community. And so one would know that if one didn't have that experience. So what I'm asking is, could one of us on the council work in tangent with another one um, SEJC member with the staff and develop the questions that will be effective and bring them to the council. How would that work or would that cause a problem as well? You could create a committee of one council member and one um, co uh, co commissioner from SEJC. It would be subject to the Brown Act. Um, so that would be the only um, addition, but it, it wouldn't, you're not prohibited from doing it. It just wouldn't be what we call an ad hoc committee. Um, so if you if you didn't want to be subject to the Brown Act, it would just need to be two council members that are meeting with staff um, or two. Uh, the, the other thing I did want to point out is, no, there's been a lot of reference to maybe the subcommittee of the SEJC looking at this, but the subcommittee um, of the SEJC really reports to the SEJC and not the council. So procedurally, it, they would report to the SEJC and then the SEJC would report to the council. So I just wanted to to point that out. But but council member Gary, you could have a council member and an SEJC member subject to the Brown Act review this process. Thank you for that clarification. So it sounds like there would be more delays if we fully give it to the SEJC to to put and bring back to us. And we don't want any more delays. Thank you so much, City Attorney. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Charlene. So, uh, Councilmember Gary, does that suggest that your preference is for a council ad hoc committee to develop the yeah. RFU in order not to, to send it back down to social and economic justice? Well, I, I like the recommendation that Councilmember McQuaid uh, that we I thought we were all in agreement with. I think we should go that route, but I mean, it's up to the council as a whole and what they would want to see. That's just my um, opinion at this time. Sure. Yeah, I was just trying to clarify um, for myself, uh, Councilmember Nason. So the direction is going away from uh, going to the SEJC, uh, having um, Councilmember Gary and Mayor Jordan uh, work uh, with the staff. They would, you know, and I. I'm I'm fine with that. I but I do want to make a comment, you know, from someone who worked for many many years for deliberative deliberative bodies um, that working with a subcommittee can be um, can be a complicated place for staff to be because the staff is responsible to uh, the body as a whole. The normal sequence of things is that. We provide that we as a council provide um, a policy direction, and then the staff works that up into something that that can be put uh, be put to work. In this situation, it seems that uh, there's an eagerness to have um, a particular council member be personally involved. I recognize that. And I'm I'm not opposed to uh, to having that happen, but I think that everyone needs to proceed with a lot of sensitivity to the fact that this is a policy board, uh, not an implementation body or some kind of executive team. Uh, it's a policy board, and ultimately we do have to rely on our staff, both the city manager and the city attorney, um, to uh, to bring us whatever it is that uh, that is going to be voted on uh, by the elected officials. Thank you, Councilmember Nason. So, uh, Councilmember Gary. Oh. I'm sorry, I have no okay. comment. No but, problem. Uh, I'll sit down. No problem. Any other, any other thoughts on these two potential tracks, pros and cons? Both ways I see. I. Personally, I'm here to serve <laughs> serve the will. I, I don't have a strong strong opinion. Yes, Vice Mayor Tiedemann. Uh, just saying, uh, it seems like the will of the council is to go for uh, subcommittee of the council, which I'm perfectly happy with the one suggested. Okay. Um, is that, could you put that in the form of a motion, I guess? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we have a motion from to that effect from uh, Council Member McQuaid, do we not? 
I don't believe that was a formal motion. It was just a motion. Okay, so if you're looking for a motion, okay. Uh, so I would motion that uh, the council direct staff to prepare uh, a request for qualifications uh, at, regarding a diversity, equity, and inclusion survey uh, and work with a subcommittee of council members, Gary and Mayor Jordan. Um, I think I'd like to have a friendly amendment. I'm, the word survey is okay, but I think it's broader than that, and I don't want to limit us to only doing a survey. Um, anyone Good. jump in now with another word? Uh, we could use what's in the agenda, which mm -hmm. would be direct staff to prepare a request for qualifications uh, for a diversity, equity, inclusion survey or potential more extensive engagement program and consult with the subcommittee of council members Gary and Mayor Jordan. Does that pass muster? How about um, an extensive racial equity engagement program, including but not limited to a racial equity survey? Uh, yes, I, I'm attempting to keep the or, and or in recognition of we may decide that a survey is the right way to go or may decide that something more is warranted. Um, okay. if, if we want to direct that it has to be something more, I think we can do that, but that doesn't seem to have been our discussion. Okay, that I can go with that. Yeah, I, I, for, for myself, I will interject that I'm focused on a survey because I think that's a necessary starting point and the survey can provide guidance in terms of what we need to explore through subsequent engagement efforts. Um, I'm not necessarily averse to including them both, but I do wanna make sure that, uh, they're, that in the respondent pool are uh, firms, companies that do have survey, strong survey capacity. Um, so I, I, I don't, I'm not opposing the language, but just, putting out there sort of my orientation on it. So it sounds like that friendly amendment was accepted, if I'm tracking this correctly. Uh, yes, do I need to restate it or? Yes. Okay, uh, so I would motion that the council direct staff to prepare a request for qualifications uh, regarding a uh, diversity, equity, inclusion survey or potentially more extensive engagement program and that they work with a subcommittee of council member Gary and mayor Jordan to do so. I have a question for the city attorney. Um, if there should be an ad hoc committee of the, the council uh, formed for this purpose, would it be able to have the social and government justice commission review whatever RFQ it drafts and then have that input come to council or does it have to go to council? You know, how many ways does it have to bounce to, to stay clean? <laughs> if you did have the SEJC review it, it would be at a Brown Act meeting. Sure. Um, I, I don't see a pro I don't see a problem with it if, if your goal is to kind of get a full review before it gets to council, that, that could work. That is my, my thought. Um, I don't know. Oh, I see the city manager has her hand raised, please. Thanks, Mayor. Um, city Attorney, I just wanted to double check another approach, should it be of interest to the council, that the SEJC provide something in writing to help guide or inform the process of a council level subcommittee with staff so that we have their um, collective um, information up front and can potentially incorporate that therein. Does that work? That would also work. Manager, I forgot. <laughs> so thank you for bringing that. <laughs> yes, I think I, I think we see a way that, that there can be interaction without triggering more Brown Act meetings, more overhead and slowing everything down. Uh, yay. So I think those parts, the, the ad hoc committee can take under advisement. I don't think that necessarily needs to be a part of the motion, but I didn't want to just do it without daylighting it here to the council. I see sort of general agreement. So, yeah, okay. Uh, there is still no second to my knowledge, unless I missed something. 
Uh, Councilmember Gary seconds. We have a motion by Vice Mayor Tiedemann and a second by Councilmember Gary. Councilmember McQuay? Yes. Councilmember Nason? Yes. Vice Mayor Tiedemann? Yes. Councilmember Gary? Yes. And Mayor Jordan? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you all. That was, uh... Mayor, Mayor Jordan, if yes. I may, sure. I, one, one comment that was made earlier uh, from Council Member Nason about a particular person, I think we need to be mindful of when we address council members that we use their, their titles or at least address them properly. I think just simply saying a particular person on the council referring to me was not in uh, good character. So I just wanted to put that on record. Let me let me clarify. Um, it was my I was talking about procedures and um, and what is the proper procedure for uh, creating a subcommittee uh, to work with staff. And so it was not my intent to be uh, discussing you in particular, Council Member Gary. Um, it was to talk about uh, the the issue of whether we should be um, uh, accommodating the desire to have one particular council member, whoever it might be, uh, work with the city manager uh, on a staff, uh, on something that is essentially a staff function. So I'm, I'm sorry if that uh, gave offense. That was certainly not my intent. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Thank you, Councilmember Gary, and, and I want to appreciate that you have brought a uh, level of formality to the proceedings that I think is quite useful. It certainly took me back to the roots of my family, um, and I think it makes for more amicable relations overall. So thank you. Uh, with that, I think we are ready to move on, um, unless there's any final comments. All right, very good. So the, the next item that we have on our agenda is council subcommittee reports, council committee reports, and from Albany and other events that council members would like to inform the body that they attended. Accepting volunteers. <laughs> council member McQuaid, thank you for volunteering. It was fast. Um, I did attend a. Um, Everyone home meeting talking about, and that was just one of the many agencies there, uh, talking about the point in time count where we, um, actually it's a national program where um, you, normally during January, counties try to count each person that's experiencing homelessness in their county. Um, it was originally scheduled for January 25th and it's been pushed back to February 23rd. Um, I also attended the League of California Cities policy or um, policy committee orientation. I don't know if I mentioned previously, but I've been appointed to both the public safety and the community services policy committees again this year. And um, also attended a wonderful chamber mixer with amazing food from our local businesses. That's it. Thank you, Councilman McWade and congratulations on getting appointed to continue service on those bodies. Thank you. Next volunteer, Councilmember Nason. Um, I attended our Alameda County Transportation Commission uh, meeting, and um, actually, the most interesting news was a committee that I'm I'm not on uh, anymore. The projects uh, uh, com committee, um, which had took a presentation on the Gilman uh, project and its progress and. Um, I guess the news there is there are some very significant uh, cost overruns, which is not terribly surprising in this uh, difficult environment. And um, uh, if people are interested in learning more about the details of the Gilman project as it goes forward, uh, I would re recommend taking a look at the ACTC's website. Um, the meeting on the uh, on January 10th of the uh, the PPLC subcommittee of the ACTC. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Nason. That's 
So I'm going to work hard on that project uh, in terms of planning before I arrived here. I'm I'm alarmed to hear that, and I probably will look into it. It's it's letting us yeah. know. Hard to avoid in these uh, in these times. Thank you. Uh, of the two remaining, uh, Vice Mayor Tiedemann and Councilmember Gary. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Um, I attended the uh, meeting of the Stop Waste um, Board's Programs Administration Committee. Uh, it reviewed the the audit for the last year, which is now known as. Not the CAFR, I think the acronym changed. I'm sorry, I don't remember the new acronym. They, they switched to the letters. And uh, it was a clean audit. Um, the, the body recommended to the three boards of that agency uh, approval of the audit, acceptance and approval of the audit. Um, I attended the Alameda County Mosquito Abatement District meeting and uh, of all things was appointed chair of its finance committee which wasn't entirely expected, but uh, accepted the nomination and look forward to learning more and serving in that role. Um, the body also received a fascinating presentation on a scientific endeavor to develop vaccines to proteins that are in the saliva of mosquitoes, pretty much all species from what I understand. And the goal of this is that that will trigger the immune system in a way that ends up destroying any viruses that also happen to be in the saliva. So it's sort of a pan disease all in one vaccine, which is pretty exciting if it works out. Um, they're in phase one trials now, uh, some of the first efforts at that. Um, so that could be quite quite a, a boon for the world, really, um, if that technology works out. Um, I attended the mayor's conference. It received a presentation on Bay Adapt, which is the sea level rise adaptation policy map developed by the Bay Conservation and Development Commission and discussed um, funding and coordination there uh, and the mayor's conference did endorse endorse the plan um, and I made a, a initial funding connection to discuss uh, with Mayor Eregin possibilities of funding because he's involved at, at those levels in the region um, and I also got some kind of mentoring from Mayor Schaff which I really appreciated as a new mayor myself uh, let her know you know I'm old but I'm never too old to be mentored I welcome that all the time um, so now is the time if there are any attendees who have any comments or questions, you will have one minute um, to do so on any of the information that the council has just provided. Um, I am looking at the attendees. I don't see that any have their hand raised. So with that, we will move on to future agenda items. Um, and I will note that as mayor, I realize now I, Able to look back. Uh, we'll do a better job at that. Look back at the last future agenda items to, to see what should be on the next agenda. I will improve in that regard, but if you will kindly humor me by listing anything that you, you have on your mind. Yes, Councilmember Nason. I think uh, the new PCI numbers are out, and I think uh, that within the next few months or whatever it might be, the paving condition index uh, numbers. And I think that within the next uh, uh, few months, it would be good to hear about uh, about that and uh, where we stand. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, my, my understanding is that that's in the queue to, to go to Transportation Commission, and then we'll come to the council as part of a pavement management plan. Um, but we can coordinate on whether you want information sooner than that or, or not. And I'll, I'll work with the city manager to find out what the timing of that is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other council member or vice, vice mayor? Nope. Okay. Um, are there any announcements of city meetings or events? I'm sorry, Mayor. Yes. There's one public. Oh, I, I apologize. Uh, welcome. Thank you. I just want to make a future agenda item of uh, school zones. Um, it's something that I've been working on as a positive suggestion for over 10 years. I know I presented it to city council many years ago. Um, the city clerk has um, many signatures on file. Um, so yeah, that's just my future agenda item is, is school zones regarding traffic speeds and things like that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pinguello, and I will note that that item is on the Transportation Commission's work plan. So unless the council decides otherwise, the, the next stop for that issue to be worked upon would be at that 
the bat body. Um, so you might attend its its meetings and encourage it to to take up that item um, sooner rather than later should you be so inclined. Uh, now, not seeing any other hands raised, and I apologize, I missed that. Move on to announcement of city meetings and events. Any announcements that any council members would like to make? Not seeing any. Move on to the final item, which would be our adjournment at 9.10. Oh, yes, Council Member Nason. Yeah, um, I would like to um, ask the council to adjourn tonight in memory of um, an Albany resident that we, uh, we lost recently. Um, Ram Rosenblum was, uh, had lived in Albany, uh, uh, I'm not sure how many years, but he was a long time uh, resident. He was um, first and foremost a, a husband and father, husband of Debbie Groudens and father of um, Avi Rosenblum, a, uh, a well-known Albany uh, football player. Um, he uh, he was a uh, uh, noted um, sound engineer who actually traveled all around the, the world uh, working on sound engineering projects. And uh, he was a noted musician and very well known to anyone who participated in the uh, COVID cellas over time. And, uh, uh, more casually and informally entertained uh, entertained his street uh, between those events. Um, he was a very special person who was really deeply loved by um, uh, the many different circles that uh, that loved him dearly. And I would like us to take a moment uh, to remember uh, to remember Rome. Thank you very much. Yes, when we take a moment of silence for this member of our community. And gratitude for the life we all have. And uh, again, following my predecessor, thank you, Councilmember Gary, Councilman McQuaid, Councilmember Nason, and Vice Mayor Tiedemann, staff, city attorney, city manager, City Clerk, and not to forget uh, KALB, thank you very much. And we are adjourned.